Ko Ivan Yo Tokuin Wa. So usually I tell people、um, I'm born from Singapore and then grow up in Malaysia and came to New Zealand. To make it funny, I usually tell people I was making Singapore processed from Malaysia and exported to New Zealand. <laughs>、um, so. It's really nerve-wracking to me today because, as a Chinese,、um, grow up in a collective culture and also authority are、uh, really superseded in all aspects of our life. Now, in my head, I have over a cross of theaters of parents,、uh, not just one. So, <laughs> understand your pressure. <laughs> So I'm going to talk to you today.、Um, instead of、uh, gambling disorder, I'm going to take a micro and macro approach. So I want to zoom in out to what gambling harm is,、um, and at the same time,、um, I also will provide you with some of the scientific、uh, study about gambling harm because I'm not a, a, a A medical professional myself, so I have prepared some videos, which will do a much better job than I'm trying to justify why that is important.、Uh, gambling harm、um, minimizations is written、uh, under the public health approach、uh, in the Gambling Harm Act. So the Ministry of Health、uh, and Tefa Tuora will have to produce a strategy every six years and. Also, an action plan every three years. So, I'm going to show you the videos、um, from the、uh, perspective of gambling harm. Gambling sometimes has negative consequences. This is called gambling harm. The effects of gambling harm may vary, but there are common themes. When someone who gambles experiences harm, important people in their life are harmed too. Relationship difficulties may start when a person forgets or prioritizes gambling over family activities. This can lead to lies and arguments, erode trust, and end in relationship breakdown. Money worries are an obvious gambling harm. Bankruptcy or losing a home are extreme. More often, gambling losses affect a person's ability to pay bills or participate in fun activities. As debts mount up, money problems may affect others who have provided loans. Sometimes people don't make the connection between gambling and emotional side effects, like stress or shame. If the harm escalates, it can lead to issues like anxiety and depression. Gambling harm carries stigma in our community. It stops people from talking about how they are affected and asking for help. Because often gambling harm or gambling disorder is only perceived as someone can afford to lose the money or not, instead of looking from a wider perspective, what does it do to that individual, the relationship with the family,、uh, and also the wider impact、uh, in the social setting as well as in employment,、um, and. In on top of that, there is another issue that quite often、uh, not being talked about, which is、uh, the effect of a、uh, family harm and gambling harm. And the study was conducted in 2013 and 2015, and majority of people who experience gambling harm also experience family harm at the same time. So. I'm going to share with you some of the stats、um, in New Zealand. So, in general, one in five individual will experience gam gambling harm in their lifetime, and unfortunately, it is disproportionately impact on Maori Pacific people, selected of Asians, and also young people. And according to 2020 Health and Lifestyle Survey, about 11 percent of adult reported gam gambling related. The harm in the past year, and what we have seen from our surveys is a rise on beside gambling harm, also online gaming among young、uh, population as well, younger population. And I really want to emphasize this:、um, Maori and Pacifica communities uh, equally uh, experience a much higher. Uh, proportion of gambling harm. However, when it comes to severity, Asians 
will most likely, which is 9.5%, experience a severe end of gambling, uh, gambling harm. The, <clears throat> what that means is when they come to our service, there was a, too little and too late for us to do anything. Translation, they have lost three properties, they have lost their life saving, and they have lost their family relationships, and they are heavily um, in debt as well as suicidal as well. So I'm going to I'm going to the scientific of a study on the brain about gambling addiction. We arranged for gambler Tony Franklin to join a unique experiment by one of the world's leading experts on addiction. Professor David Nutt. Gambling addiction is not a failure of will. It is a brain disorder which is preyed upon by the gambling industry. I wish I could feel my heartbeat <laughs> just rising, <laughs> just looking at the damn thing. Once you become addicted, it's very, very hard to stop because you have turned, you've changed your brain. Addiction is a, it is a brain that has changed to become entrained to the desires of the, of, of the gambling. So we're going to start the roulette task, Tony. This will be the first time anyone plays something similar to a fixed odds betting terminal from inside an MRI scanner. The professor says it will reveal what's happening in Tony's brain as he uses a keypad to bet. I've got £1,000 to spend. Can I spend it all on the first spin? When Tony is doing his task, when he's looking at the roulette wheel and he's making a decision to bet, parts of the brain get turned on and then they can't stop. And we think there's probably a chemical basis to that. So that's what we're expecting to see, that the habit centers are overactivated in people with gambling compared with normal people like us. The brain's not very active. Maybe a little bit here, he's thinking at the, what, you know, where, what shall I do? But it's pretty calm. Contrast that with what happens in the next one. And that's he's a huge difference from indeed there to that's there. Exactly. So that's in the matter of seconds as well, would it be? Exactly. Or? Absolutely, yes. Okay. So here we see the visual system, the back of the brain here, intensely activated. He's watching really closely. He wants that ball bearing to come down on his colour. And now we look at the emotional regions. And these are different regions activated. This is the anterior cingulate cortex, this is the insula, and these are the two areas of the brain which make sense of emotions. They may generate the emotion he's feeling of excitement. Will I win? Won't I win? And here we see a very similar picture. In fact, the only real difference between winning and anticipating is this area here. And this is an area where I think we see the sense of uh, satisfaction. Yeah, I've won. That's good. Register that. Start again. But overall, winning and waiting to see if you've won, the anticipation, they're both pretty much the same. And that's a really key point about gambling. It's not just the winning that counts. It's the taking part. And the taking part repeatedly when you don't win is as activating to a gambler as the winning. When, you, when you're sitting in a fixed odd terminal, you're getting this every 20 Constant. seconds. Yeah. So you can have hundreds of them. And so that process can become, in the end, it becomes kind of habitual, it becomes addictive. So the slot machine in general, or any gambling method is designed uh, for um, use to be uh, negative it's reinforcements like um, to get people stay on that um, process uh, instead of getting it out. Uh, hence, you know, like people usually uh, lost the time uh, when they become uh, severely addicted to gambling. And bear in mind that uh, not all gambling are harmful. Social gambling can be uh, productive when uh, a few um, you know, like senior adults might play mahjong together uh, to where someone might try to chase losses, uh, feeling guilty after that, and even using their uh, saving uh, to gamble or their weekly income to severely depress and debt and even thinking about suicide. And so what can you do about it? 
uh, Safer Gambling Aotearoa, which is funded by the Ministry of Health, uh, have a website uh, where anyone can go to it and visit uh, the website. And that it will also run tests uh, for individuals uh, to look at their um, problem gambling issue. Where you go to the site and scroll into uh, the button, uh, go to test your gambling and in the test your gambling you can also test uh, yourself or someone else um, by answering um, nine questions that's based on the DSN-5 uh, so I have made this video myself so that you get to see um, if you are interested you can also email me uh, where I will give you a template uh, that you can also use it in the GP practice uh, before uh, seeing the client. Um, and once you've done it, uh, it will also give you an idea, uh, the result, as well as uh, let you know where you can seek help. Uh, so there is clinics that are free and available around New Zealand, um, such as Asian Family Services. Uh, and the referral process is very simple and straightforward, including just emailing the contact detail, uh, let them know that the clients are interested uh, to be seen, and that will follow by a qualified and registered uh, counsellor or someone who um, have registered to that pen as well. And the good thing is all these services are free and available. And these are the nine questions. Um, and it's not just available for individual, but also for the family members. Um, to bear in mind, uh, culture does come into uh, the nuances of understanding what gambling harm is, because it's framed through public health approach, uh, not uh, on um, as a what I'm trying to say is, in many um, New Zealand countries, uh, gambling harm is framed as a legal issue instead of public health uh, framework. Hence, many Asians who came from do not understand what gambling harm minimization means. Uh, the second thing is they also don't understand what behavioral addictions. They usually, they usually only associate addictions with sustain abuse because it's much more easily identified. Uh, and thirdly, they, are, they also don't know what counselling is or what uh, counselling can help them. Finally, they also worry about their visa status. Um, and so confidentiality is very important. Before um, I go, I will leave some brochure in front of the desk uh, so you can uh, get in touch with us. We also, pro we also provide incredible years parenting programs in Mandarin, um, Korean, Japanese, and Hindi, but there is a waiting list and it's free and available for anyone. Uh, we also have uh, resources, information, Asian helpline uh, that speak uh, eight languages. Anyone can contact our services, uh, which is 0800 862 342 nationwide, uh, English, Mandarin, Cantonese, Hindi, Korean, Vietnamese, Thai, and Japanese. Um, and finally, you can follow us on our social media. So <laughs> that's it. Thank you.